So we're just going to go along and show how. I'm going to bring her along. That we're going to transfer what we did with Trevor with Rosie. Sounds like a kiddie story, doesn't it? Trevor and Rosie went for a ride. Bring her on in. There we go. There we go. All right. Round to the next side. Because using the stick, we carry it on the inside. We carry it on the inside to back the inside leg up. The inside leg is to create impulsion. If we're creating impulsion to the inside leg, and we slow the nose down, just give a little tap. Tap, tap. There we go. Tap, tap. It'll get there. Slow down. There you go. There you go. There you go. So it makes them up and down, not falling. Lateral work teaches young horses to kind of sprawl and get a little drunk looking. But if their feet are coming up and down, swap hands. Come back this way. Just down the line. That's it. That's it. Right or forward. Any kind of forward. There we go. Just relax. Just relax. Yes. Good. So getting lateral control in place helps to diffuse this bomb. She's a little bomb of a pony. So just per come here and pass me your stick. Have a little walk, trot, and canter, just on the circle at this end. That's it. And canter when you're ready. So what she likes to do is she likes to get up. So just bend to the inside, bend to the inside, just to the inside, just to the inside. That's it, good. And then relax when you can, if you can. That's it, just quietly. There you go, relax, just relax. Now by this point when we first got her, we'd have had a, a childlike imprint <laughs> on the back wall. And then just quietly forward to trot. Ooh, there, speak to her. There you go and just quietly relax. So if we hadn't have got this relationship with lateral flexion in place with lateral movement through the neck to the hind leg to disengage the buck, she'd still be bucking today. So this is where this process starts to work. Diagonals. Okay, that's it, just trot. Just lateral flexion. Because this is a very strong pony. Lateral flexion, there you go, there you go. And relax, just relax. Soften your hands, there you go. So she's been a real test of process because natives will test you, mares will test you, whilst ponies will test you. And so will children, but he hasn't been that testing, he's been a good lad. So if I just get you to bring her over here a sec, Will. Hi there. This'll do. Oh, what a good posy. You want to jump off for a sec? No, that'll be fine there. So, the little exercise I did with Trevor, if we start to point, because most horses, when they accelerate, it's the inside hind. So I'm looking for her to lower and relax her head, change her posture, speed up the hip. And so what she does, she's had 10 years or so of running around with her head in the air, so it's a really difficult habit for her to break. There she goes, there she goes. So any horse that is up emotional and their posture is up and full and braced, that's when we know we're in a bit of trouble. Once we know we can quietly and efficiently lower the horse's head, not to force it down or to hold it in, they'll start to get calmer. 
instant access to the hind feet through an open rein. So I ask her to speed up and let go. So she's still holding her nose out. Good girl. There. So her, like most horses that are overexcitable and a little bit wound up, and then when she's sensible, I can let her out. The circle gets bigger and bigger. And so I don't need to hold her head down. She's learning to drop it. And it's still a work in progress, but it makes her rideable now. And now we can ride her without being bucked off and run off with. Steady there. We find ourselves in a position of being able to put training in place. Good girl. Yeah. So, ease of control. Do you want to bring Trevor back over? Bring Trevor over. Come on in. So once a horse starts to understand, understanding means I'm comfortable, happy, relaxed, capable. Then we can start to be a bit more time efficient. And again, if you've got two horses, if you spend time working each horse individually, this way. Come on. So then we can lunge to it at the same time. Now you've probably guessed, Rosie slows, speeds Trevor up and Trevor slows Rosie down. And it gives me a chance to have a break as well. Any questions on anything? Yes. Can you speak up a bit? Oh. Tonight, Matthew. Come on down. Right, OK. I've got a 17-year-old mare, and she's fine with this um, desensitizing, but she's a mental stressor. So when we go out anywhere hacking, even if it's just a basic walk, she comes back and she is dripping in sweat. She's been tested for cushions, she has no heart murmur, and I've tried karma supplements and nothing works. See, I'd, I'd love a, a share of the karma's market. Who would like their horse karma? <laughs> yes, a lot of people. So. For me, when she gets sweaty, does, the, does she come up? Yeah, she jogs constantly. Jogs constantly. So there's, what happens is that when they jog, they invert. So if we think about where a horse's head is, low down, that if the pole is level with the wither, that's the kind of midline. When we think about how unemotional horses are when they graze, it's just chilled out, relaxed, and something goes bang, and they go, what was that? Oh, well, never mind. When we know the head's up there, we're in trouble. It's up periscope, up emotion, up and out of control. Now, even if we manage to keep them in the jog or stop them bolting or going away from us, they're still out of control. So we think that that is a management by bringing the horse in. For me, it's bringing the horse down. And then once they're down and they're comfortable, we can bring them back up to that. But they have to go down. It's a, it's a physical that affects the psychological. And any process, again, that starts to invite the horse to lower its head in its work, to reduce emotion, not just to go long and low or to stretch the back or any of that, that it is a conditioned response that if I see trouble on the horizon or things going wrong, ooh, I need to get you there. Because I know if you're that kind of horse, you're always going to be like that. I can't change that, but what I can do is have an effect when you're at your worst. You're probably going to still be a little sweaty and a little bit bubbly, but I want it to be able to have a countermeasure. 
so that when you are like that, after five minutes, you can go <sighs> and relax. I can let you out again. So that's how I go about it. But it's also teaching them to lower their head. See, I've always been thought when people say to me, what would you do if a horse got stressed out in a hack? Well, now you've told me, I know there's loads of work to do at home before I get back out on a hack again. What would you do with a horse that reared or napped or did whatever? Well, now you've told me that there's a lot of work I have to do to break down and go through all the little pieces. Horses that nap and rear are all crooked and bent, as in they're not forward or straight. There's one leg that they're going to support themselves on, which is part of bracing. Size, speed, and strength starts to take effect. 